Coming back to do Laneway feels really lucky because it's a totally boutique festival. There's hardly any people there. What made you choose to do Laneway? What makes you want to do a little boutique festival when you could come and do another show at Spark Arena and sell it out? It's just cool, isn't it? It's just fun. It's like, I don't know, it's like, I... I had really good, do you remember, I had really good fun when we did Big Day Out for yes. a start. I liked touring Australia in that way. And there's kind of like a, like Charlie XCX is doing it, like the friends of ours are doing it. It's in the summertime, it's Australia. Why not, you know? No. And um, we just played shows. We will have just played shows here. Like I'm here mm. to do shows now, so mm. it's exciting. I like it because it kind of makes me think that you're keeping it real. Well, you've got to remember, like, we are, regardless of our stylistic leanings, pop or whatever it is, we're, we, we have to be a cult band in this part of the world because we're not on the radio or the TV. We're not really that much on the TV or anything anywhere. I mean, we're on the radio a lot in the UK and stuff. And mm. But radio and magazines and press and stuff, we're not really, that doesn't really happen for us over here. So it's always been this quite real, authentic relationship with the amount of, like we play arenas, it's yeah, crazy. I know. So, um, so it's like, we're still, people are still kind of like our band and stuff, so. Um, it's just, a, I don't know, we're just attracted to it. And um, you do a lot of, I think I love the way you kind of DIY your music in a sense as well. You don't, it sounds like you don't go into big flash studios. We don't go, well, we don't not go into big flash studios, but we definitely don't have big flash production. We are producers, yeah. so we're as excited by Abbey Road as anywhere else, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's not that we would limit ourselves to keeping it grungy, but we don't have other external influences so there's no one else there it's me and George or me George and Jamie and Adam and Ross and that's kind of it and um, so there's a humility in in that mm. and then um, it is literally DIY we do it ourselves yeah with John sorry as well who's our engineer who's like our best mate from the first album so it's like it is kind of we we grew up in like punk music and hardcore music, like an an emo music yes. kind of, and um, that's what we kind of did. It was the first time you could like do stuff on like your laptop, and, mm. like late two thousand. So that's kind of what we did, and that's what we've always done. Are you still making music as you're touring? Yeah, we've yeah. had to. I mean, the song "People" that came out of this record was made on the the bus in the American tour, but we had a studio bus. I heard about this. Yeah. Did you get to design it or is no, it? No, 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 that's the thing. Like, I mean, like, uh, like kind of hip hop artists use, yeah. have used them quite regularly. And um, it's, it's, it's instead of a back lounge with a TV and stuff, you just have like a setup to kind of record. So we, we did like people for the, its majority on there. And a lot of stuff kind of happened on there. So that's kind of how we've been doing it. But that's kind of how we've always been done it, because I've never put, put down like songwriting, you know, it's not something that I like pick up or put down. What's the drive to keep releasing things though? Because <coughs> I feel like lots of artists um, are recording more mm. and releasing more often. Mm. Is, it like a, is it like a currency thing? Has the music world changed and people have to release more music? or? Are you just naturally, you like being kept busy and you like having, do you know where I'm sort of going? I think it's both. I think, I think that like on a consumption kind of cultural level, yeah, every, this is the whole thing. Like my, I always use that analogy of I'll watch something on Netflix and then I'll have this 10 minute period when it's finished. I'll be like, that's the best thing I've ever seen. Or I'll watch it on whatever thing and then I'll be like, next, what's the next best thing that I've ever seen? What's the next best record that I've heard this year? Every, we have this tenacious appetite for like content for a start and especially with like music and, and TV and um, 
I think that I just want to be rep representative of now and kind of yeah. part of the zeitgeist. And I think that this the, 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 the expression I keep using of kind of a real time expression is kind of like what you see now with a lot of modern artists. And I just want to. I don't know. I, I, it, it's a diff also a difficult thing to try and explain. I just want it to make is. two records. I guess that yeah, because if this new album comes out early next year, you could. I think that what I admire about your music, ever since day one, mm. is your ability to stay connected and be really relevant. And I wondered, I guess, where I'm going. I wonder if you are so relevant because you do, you know, write the music right up until deadline day. You know, yeah, like so South you can include, Park. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. That. So you can include really, you know, things that are going in the world. Yeah, it can get. The thing is, though, uh, yes, I, I can uh, maybe. I think so. Probably a bit of that. Mm. I think that. It can be a bit, the last thing I ever want to do is, remember when Katy Perry used epic fail in the song? <laughs> that was like so horrible. I love Katy Perry, like Teenage Dream and is like one of my favorite pop songs of all time. But if you try and be too zeitgeisty and kind of, it can get a bit, it can be really dated if you're like constantly just like referencing the time yes. on the nose. Yeah. So I, I kind of, like the idea of being a bit more timeless. Yeah. You know what I mean, so I don't know how modern inherently we are, but we're always trying to expand the culture, you know? Mm. I love Katy Perry too, but it really shocked me that she put a camera on herself for three days or something. Do you what remember this? For the release of her last album. All right. And she, this camera followed her everywhere for three days and you could live stream it or whatever. And you went to counselling sessions and you went to, yeah, it was really intense. But I like the idea until it got a bit performative. Same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because watching that wasn't comfortable. Yeah. But you've also been really intimate with what you share. Well, not maybe so much, but you were such an early adapter, I hate that term, but on Twitter. Or, you know, you gained so much fan base because you were, um, you were so active on Twitter for a while. Well, no, you know what it is? I think it's like... What, and then there's words that get thrown around like problematic or like woke or like any uh, at either end of the spectrum. I think that because like the 1975 operates in certain cultural circles, I keep saying cultural, but certain circles and we're kind of next to like other pop stars. Yeah. That's kind of who we're next to because alternative music like in the 2000s, do you remember where you had like your Marilyn Mansons and your... Fred Durst, or ridiculous characters like that. We don't really have that kind of alternative music thing in the way we have kind of like rappers now and stuff like that. But like, still like in pop music, no, not people don't really express their opinion about anything. They don't yeah. really say anything, really, you know. Or if they do, it's massively. Yeah, unless they're kind of in like hip hop, pretty much. But. It's like, and there's artists that I really, really admire and I love that do do that, mm. you know, like, I don't know, St. Vincent or mm. Father John Misty or people like that. But I'm talking like the 1975, we're more next to like big pop stars. Mm. And they don't really say anything. So I think that I get represented for saying loads of stuff, mm. whereas I don't. I just probably say like the normal amount of stuff. You're so honest with your um, lyrics and everything. How's, and you've been really, really open about addiction and, you know, going away to a, uh, you did horse therapy? Yeah. <laughs> equine, equine therapy. Equine therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you handling this crazy adventure of touring almost non-stop for a year? Oh, I mean, it's been, it's always been the, the, uh, the same, do you know what I mean? Like, it's always been crazy since yeah. we first started. Yeah. You know, it becomes your reality, yeah. you know, like, um, I don't know. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard, but it's not. It's also like awesome. Like, I get up every day and I kind of like listen to my music and then I go and play my show. It's kind of cool. Do you listen to 1975 when you wake up? Not old 1975. <laughs> oh. I don't like pop on. I like it when you sleep. <laughs> yeah. But I am. Um, I listen to. The, I, that, that's how I write records. Like, I just have essentially kind of like vocalless demo of the whole album yeah that i then write the vocals to and then yeah. go actually we need to change this bit or actually this verse don't work or 
Yeah. Ah. Um, I had a little bit of a cry the other day. I'm going through this really weird thing, which I wonder if you're, or you can relate to, where the environment in the world is mm. getting me depressed. Mm. <laughs> um, politics, yes, mm. I can't do anything about that. But mm. I think the environment, I'm really thinking how I can change it at the moment mm -hmm. or do something good. I'm getting to this age, it might be midlife epiphanies or something. No, no. But your album really resonated with me, or the, the, the theme that I think your new album is going to be. And what I, what I had a cry about was the intro track, the self-titled intro track that you've released with Greta Thun Thunberg. Mm -hmm. Do I say her name like that? Yeah. Greta Thunberg talking over it. And it, she's so eloquent and she's so awesome. Mm. And I wondered how, how you've come about for your next album to be quite focused on the environment. Well, I, I think that, like, with a brief inquiry, the last album, it wasn't really that. There was a couple of tracks that were about the fear of the internet overtly, but mm. everything else was about me. It was a record about all of my fears and my desires. Mm. And at that time, it was kind of like, what is the internet doing to democracy and to us and to people and to all this mm. kind of stuff? And then very quickly, my main fear became, you know, environmental uh, issues. So the record has that on it. And the reason that we led with that is because once I'd done that with Greta, my initial idea was to have it to be the first track on the album. So when everyone got the album, they had this statement at the beginning. Mm. But as soon as I recorded it, I was like, that is not a statement for six months time. That's a statement for now. Yeah. We have to put it out. Um, so we did. So it's not really a record about the environment. Oh, it's not. Well, I mean, people is a bit, the mm. song, you know, and, and th th there is moments on there that are about that, but it's another record about me. I mean, to be honest with you, like, we kind of had moments, even though we, most people uh, in our situation probably make like their most flash record. And we just keep laughing to ourselves, being like, can we really make a record like this right now? Like, there's a lot of attention on us. And this is a very, like, inward record. Because, yeah, the internet, uh, yeah, I was trying to sort of, I guess, overthink where you were going. Because that internet album, totally, you can change your attitude and you can, because you're online at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. On yeah. Yeah. I'm on, I'm on uh, Instagram more than I'm on Twitter, because I find Twitter a bit insane. Yeah. Yeah, kind of a whole corridor of screens. <laughs> <laughs> totally. But with Instagram, do you also find yourself, or can you also see perhaps how people can become addicted to it? Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. I always say that thing of like, the interface that I have that keeps me safe, or at least feeling a bit safe, is that with me and people like me, my relationship with social media is like, this is what I do. Yeah. And if you're a young person especially, or if you're anybody else, it's this is who I am and like with and even though like who I am and what I do are incredibly intertwined there is a separation there to a certain extent so I just fear for like young people who their kind of relationship with the outside world is a model that is kind of putting something out there and then waiting for a response because like we have evidence that that's like a recipe for disaster kind mm. of in regards to like anxiety especially for like young women totally it's a nightmare so um it's kind of yeah self-worth and stuff like that is very very wrapped up in how we um how, how we relate to each other online so it's do you think about that yeah like you must have thoughts like that and then do you think about how you or the 1975ers marketed to your fans or how you could stop them, not that you guys would be pushing any like crazy hot bodies or anything, but I guess do you think about how you impact your fans? Because you must yeah, have yeah, crazy we have a responsibility. Well. We yeah. have a responsibility, but like, I mean, I like the you know the, just a conversation of, uh, of art. Mm. So like that's why there's so many references in my music to like or in the visual stuff to, the, that we do, there's so much like references to like 
cultural references, mm. artistic uh, art references and stuff. So I think that that's one of the things that we take responsibility for is kind of like making sure that the conversation with our fans has meaning and substance, mm. you know, and then that it's kind of didactic in a way, especially when we're talking about like, you know, the environment and stuff. We mm. need it to be purposefully informative. Um, thank you for caring about the environment because you're also doing things like, is it true that you were um, planting a tree for every ticket sold to a particular gig and you did eco packaging? Yeah. You're shopping at op shops, your boots are great. <laughs> <laughs> I only really kind of buy vintage clothes now. That was kind of a thing that had already happened anyway. Yeah, totally. Unless people send me stuff. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. Were you in the studio when Greta recorded her vocals? Yeah, I went to Stockholm to do it. Ah. I was in Stockholm and then I went back. Um, she must be approached by so many people. Was she a fan of you guys? She's not really that. From, from the conversation I had with her, she's not particularly interested in culture. Mm. She had, she's serious, man. Mm. When you meet her, it's like powerful. She's not messing around. It's not like she's not nice. She is nice, she's really nice, but like, <laughs> like she's, she's not messing around. She's not interested in anything else apart from saving the planet. So when you meet somebody like that, they're kind of like a superhero or yeah. almost like a supervillain. Depends who you think, do you know yeah. what I mean? With their, their intensity. She is amazing and she's profound. And she kind of, um, the thing is, like, in pop culture, she hasn't been that approached by many people. Mm. So, but still, I think that it was the perfect, um, perfect combination of people to do it. Will she continue her relationship at all with the 1975, or was that sort of a one-off? I mean, she's not going to be, like, doing any guitar solos. <laughs> she might, no. <laughs> I'm sure we'll see her again on our travels, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.